G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name's Matthew. Now we've all got uh, scrap pieces of material that we want to use to fit parts onto and we don't want to throw it away. So in this video I want to show you a piece of uh, online software that I found called deepnest.io. Now deepnest allows us to have all our parts and nest them nice and closely together so that it reduces the amount of wastage and material that we're using. We may also just have a whole heap of parts and we want to lay them out on the uh, material as best we can. We might have a sheet and we know our known sheet size and we want to fit those parts in without having to drag them around in our software to fit them nicely on that material. So Deep Nest is a good uh, piece of uh, software that'll help you do this quickly and effectively. So this is the website deepnest.io and you can download Deep Nest for Windows, OS X or Linux. So you may have a sheet, uh, an off cut such as this, and what we can do is deep nest into this shape so that we can uh, get the most out of the material as we can. So first of all, we'll just have to measure it up and draw up that shape in Lightburn and export it as an SVG. So I've got my scrap piece of material drawn up here. Now what I want to do is see how many of these letters I can fit onto this scrap piece of material. So first of all, um, I, this is a font, so I can't individually drag those letters unless I convert it to a path. So I go to edit and I convert to path and now what I could do is then manually move these across. Now the problem with doing that is if you don't group things like the A you will lose bits and pieces of those letters so it can be quite a tedious process if you're going to do it manually like this. This is where um, the deep nest works really well. So it's still a font we don't have to worry about changing it from a font yeah, it could be just parts for um, a, a box cutout that you're doing. It doesn't matter. I'm just using letters as an example here. So what I'm going to do is I can export them separately. I could uh, select the alphabet section and export that as an SVG file. And I can also export my scrap as an SVG file. I'm going to show you both methods. But also I could select all and ex ex export this whole area as an SVG. So we go to file export and this time I'm going to call them both and I save it as an SVG file and now what we do is we open up Deep Nest. And what we can do is we can import and we can import the alphabet so I'll show you that first. It takes a little bit of time to um, come in. So it's imported all the letters so we can um, then import another option which is our scrap piece of material and say OK. So what this is going to do it's going to put that shape that we want to fit it in and we tick that box. So this is where all those other parts are going to be tried to be nested into. Once we've selected that we can go start nest. It's nice and simple it will then go away and try to fit as many of those pieces in as it can see. And up the top here will tell you that one sheet is used and 26 items have been placed. Now you may not want to wait around for the best nesting uh, possibilities. It will keep trying and you can actually see the different combinations that it's used. Usually the best one that to go with is the one that is at the top and it will use the least amount of material being that uh, you might have a leftover piece. So once we're happy with one we can uh, stop nest and we can select the file that we want or the shape that we want and then we can use it. So I'm going to keep the top one and go export SVG file. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this one is called nested but what we do need to do is put a .svg behind it otherwise you won't be able to import it into Lightburn or RDWorks. So now I'm going to save that. So that's our saved file. And now if I go back to Lightburn and let's just open a new file and we go File, Import and we're going to find the ne uh, nested folder that we created and we called it Nested and here it comes into the, into the area. So once we've got our file ready to go we can set the origin. So in this case I'm going to use the top left hand corner of that piece of material and obviously uh, line it up in the laser machine so that it frames right down the edge of the material and then uh, so that we got it positioned correctly in the laser machine. And once we've got that ready we can then assign our laser power and speed settings and then start the cut on our controller.
So as you can see, once we're finished, we've been able to reduce the wastage. We've been able to use a piece of scrap material to cut all these out. And it's uh, nested all those parts really well and nice, quick and easy using deepnest.io. So as I mentioned, we can also import the uh, file that we did as both so that it's got the uh, scrap shape on there as well. So if we just do an import of that one, and then once that comes in, if we select the scrap shape, that will be our containing shape that it would nest into. And obviously we can start nesting and it will do the same as we just saw earlier. We can then stop nest and go back. The other thing that you might want to do is you might not want a scrap piece of material. So what we can do is we can delete that original shape and we can create a shape down here. So we may have a piece of material that we want to cut that is uh, 300 by 600 millimeters. And we can then add that shape in there and we find that shape in our list and we can tick the box. What we could do then is then nest those into that new shape, which is the rectangle that we created. And it would try to um, fit them in as much as possible. Now, if we have a material that is smaller than the work that we're trying to work on, we could create several. So what we could do is we could, uh, we'll delete this uh, large one here. Let's say we've got some material that are only 250 by 250 by 250 millimeters, and we can add that. So it's just a square. And I'm gonna show you what happens when it doesn't fit in, and we'll start that nest. So it's trying to nest and it's telling me that it's placed uh, 10 out of 26 so far and it's used one sheet. And it's just gonna keep trying until it gets as many as it can onto that one sheet. However, you may never be able to fit all 26 letters on that one sheet. And what we could do then is uh, stop, go back. So as we could see, they didn't all fit on one. So what you can do is go down to your selecting shape and say you've got multiple sheets all the same size, where you then can change the quantity of those sheets down here. So we're gonna put three. So once we've selected three, we can then start the nest. And now it uh, will have three sheets used and we can see that it's got all those uh, parts on there and we've uh, got down to the third sheet and we have uh, four or five letters on that and it will keep trying until it gets the best fit and if you find that it's not uh, quite fitting with the quantity of sheets you can always go back and change the quantity of those sheets or the bounding shape to the number that you want however you may also have um, as sheets that are 250 and you might have another scrap piece of material so you just add the uh, the number of bounding shapes that you want to fit those parts in now the other thing that you have is you might actually want to have all these quantities so you want to have two or three of each so let's go and change them all to two this is going to take a little bit of time so what you can do here is change the quantity of each of the shapes to two. If you want two of each, three of each, you just change the quantity of all of those and then the quantity of the containing sheets that you want to fit them in. And you can have this up as many as you like and it will use the least amount of sheets as possible. So we're gonna start the nest there and we'll see that it automatically will duplicate all those parts onto the uh, sheet areas that we want. And we can see we've got two D's and two O's and two Q's. And it's only used six sheets and it will continue to place them as it reduces the amount of sheets used. And just remember when you're exporting your SVG file, just make sure that uh, you put .svg at the end of the file extension so that you can import it into your laser software. So just a few little tips and tricks using a deep nest. We can see here that I have um, a small gap here between the edge and each letter, as well as between these letters here. Now I've actually set this to one millimeter so that between each part, there's always gonna be one millimeter spacing. And the way that you do that is you go into the settings. So we click on the gear icon here and we can use uh, millimeters or inches. And I've set that here to one millimeter. And just uh, for example, I'm gonna change this to five millimeters. And if we do that nest again, we can see that straight away we will have five millimeters between the bounding box and our parts, as well as five millimeters between each of those parts. Now it will still fit all those 26 parts on a sheet, but as you can see, because of that extra spacing and buffering required, it's nearly gonna fill up that third sheet rather than just have uh, four or five letters on there. 
So with these settings, the nesting configuration, you can have it in inches or millimetres. I generally have the space between parts set at one millimetre. And if you hover over each of these different settings, on the right hand side, it will give you an explanation of those settings so that you can um, optimise it best for your machine and for the way that you want to output those. Now they're automatically saved and then you can click back on the deep nest icon to get back to the main uh, window and start your nest. So thanks for visiting MW Laser. Hopefully this deep nest software will help you optimize the uh, material that you're using and reduce the uh, wastage. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos in the future. Until next time, take care. Cheers.